Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills. We have another great show for you today. Uh, but before we meet our guests, I just want to take this time to thank you so much for all the uh, emails that you have sent to us with your encouraging remarks. You know, we want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, we appreciate you so much. And you can email us at skillstorock at gmail.com. Again, that's skillstorock at gmail.com. Our special guest today is Mr. Freeman Owen. Freeman is the CEO and president of Financial Sources, Inc. He is also an international traveler, giving motivational speeches and educating his audiences on finances and wealth empowerment. Freeman is a family man who is active in his church and in his community. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Freeman Owen. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you? How and, are you today? And fine. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. All it's right. a pleasure for you to be here. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to get right into it. We don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, this afternoon, so I want to get as much, glean as much as I can from you. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization, Financial Sources, Inc. Oh, okay. Um, been in business for about uh, 35 years now, and uh, our mission at, with Financial Sources, Inc. is to make sure that we conserve your assets, or I should say your nest egg, preserve it, uh, such that it generates a, a lifetime income that you can't possibly outlive. Uh, another great service that we offer is that we carry, we have ongoing uh, seminars, wealth preservation seminars, to help individuals like yourself. Uh, our retirees and pre-retirees, which I specialize in, and making sure you cannot possibly outlive your income. Uh, we help uh, by help by uh, providing uh, programs that will help reduce your taxes on your Social Security. Uh, make sure that your beneficiaries are, are designated properly for your IRAs mm -hmm. or different types of employer-sponsored retirement accounts, such as TSPs and 401ks and 403bs. Uh, IRAs. So that's, uh, w as I mentioned, we've been around 35 years and I am an independent agent here in the Washington metropolitan area, Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. And so um, I will continue, <laughs> because I love what I do, to uh, aid those who uh, wish to have guaranteed returns on their retirement income and uh, prevent the IRS from taking most of your, your retirement nest egg. Wow, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a tall order, mm -hmm. uh, especially mm -hmm. when you talk about an income that you don't have to die to use. I mean, that you, you can't can possibly just, outlive it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want to know more about that. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, more about well, that? Well, the, <clears throat> what, the, the type of products that we offer um, have uh, guarantees that are provided. So they're guarantees uh, based on the claims paying ability of different insurance companies. I might want to add a disclaimer too while we're having this talk. Uh, the information that I'm providing for, to you today, yes. uh, I don't want you to, or the, the viewing audience, to construe it as investment tax or legal advice because we don't offer right. legal true. tax or investment advice. Uh, it's simply educational and, and information. informational. Right, information and education. Exactly. Right. That's it. That's All right. the way to go. So we do have various products as I mentioned. Um, and strategies, which we'll talk about a little later, uh, in implementing uh, guarantees uh, for, our, uh, for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, now, speaking of guarantees, now I, everyone is talking about the uh, fiscal cliff. Yes. All right. Well, the amazing thing about the programs that I offer to many of my clients, uh, they don't have to concern themselves with it uh, because they have contractual agreements. Uh, with various insurance companies, which more or less uh, guarantees that there is a minimum amount of interest, their principal is protected, and I will elaborate a little bit uh, further on uh, in the program. Right, I want to hear. I want to hear more about that, about the principles being protected, because so often mm -hmm. it's not. And like you say, later on we can uh, we can get into that. Yeah, uh, the the, the principle is protected, just like we protect, and I think it's a great idea to to have the various types of protections uh, in your life. Uh, for example, uh, we insure our, our home. Uh, we insure our uh, automobiles. That's true. And insure our lives. Uh, why not insure and have some type of protection 
uh, that most uh, baby boomers, ages, uh, if you're born between 1946 and 64, and your retirees who were born prior to those years, uh, 46, 1946, are concerned about outliving their resources, yes. outliving their monies. So why not have protection uh, against outliving your monies? Uh, I think that's uh, very, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, about 87 percent of the population who are in who are ages 55 plus mm -hmm. are concerned about. Well, will I have enough money right. to uh, to live on and comfortably after I retire? So those are the key items that uh, we focus in on at our firm. And the amazing thing is we do not charge fees. That's a big. That's a big. Mayor, that's a big one. Because yes, because I know. Uh, in the past, there had been a lot of legal uh, issues coming up about some of the fees that were being charged. Exactly. And you know, some of the investments. What I want to uh, turn to, I just wanted to, to share with you a few items that, uh, uh, or factors that impact our retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, one is aging. Uh, we live longer. Right. Uh, two is uh, underfunded pension programs and the expense of various government programs such as Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Uh, we have those are major factors that impact your retirement. So if you take aging of America, I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, uh, let's say, I, I'll share this personal story. Right. Um, uh, I my, like personal testimonies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being from the Midwest, my father worked in a steel mill. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, in the 50s, he would, um, uh, what he worked at steel mill, bring his check home to my mother, and um, she uh, managed a, a budget. It was my brother, my mother, and my father. That one check. Now, when he retired, all right, uh, he was able to get to live fairly well with just a pension and his Social Security. My mother did not work. So today, since we're living longer, now, it's a different type of environment now um, as far as uh, retirement is concerned. We're living longer, 25 to 30 years of retirement. That's the type of retirement we had to prepare for. Back in the 50s uh, and early 60s, a person or individual would retire and pass on maybe after five years, if he's, he or she is fortunate, maybe 10 years after retirement. Right. So now we have to concern ourselves again with longevity risk. Right. Um, we're living longer, better me medical technology, uh, so we're aging and therefore we must have uh, monies that will uh, carry us through with a worry-free retirement. Right. Uh, and that is to make sure that uh, we never uh, outlive those resources. Well, Freeman, does that mean that the products have had to change from back in your father's day? because? I mean, I hear a lot of people talking about they have lost the shirts off their back. I know that, um, you know, I'm still working full time, and we've got people that are um, over 70 mm -hmm. that are still there. You know, the young folks are sitting back waiting on when they're going to retire so they mm -hmm. can get some of these promotions. Mm -hmm. And my thought is that they can't afford to retire just yet because some of them have lost so much money in the products that they have been using, I guess, for years. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, there has been a lot of volatility um, in, in uh, the Great Recession, but I'm proud to say that none of my clients lost a dime. Why? Because they have contractual agreements with, it, with an insurance company or insurance companies uh, where they have been offered uh, annuities, fixed index annuities, fixed annuities, which guarantees, again, go back to that principle, guarantees the principle. Um, there are Guarantee, other guarantees that provide there's a minimum amount of interest and when there's volatility in, in, these, in the market the principle is definitely safe uh, and with these guarantees that are provided. Freeman, and, could, could I just stop mm -hmm. you there because for some of our uh, audience that may not understand what an annuity is. Can okay. you tell us simple terms what is an okay. annuity? In layman's terms uh, 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 an, an annuity is a product in which uh, is sold by an insurance company and, and you buy this, this product um, where you have a contract with the insurance company 
that will offer you a guarantee of income from the premium that you uh, use the word premium from the, the monies that you place into uh, this uh, this product. Okay. Uh, there are uh, liquidity options available for you, so um, there are uh, you can have it uh, such that the monies are passed on to your children mm. and your grandchildren, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's it's a great uh, product to have to supplement Social Security. It is the only product that offers you a guaranteed income. Wow. It's guaranteed, just like Social Security. It is, uh, you're, you have uh, a worry-free uh, retirement, and you know that check is coming right. month after month, after month after month, year in and year out. As long as you live. As long as, as, you, long live. as you live. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about retirement makes me think of something. I, I spent a little time going over your website, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go back and spend more time, in-depth time. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the short time that I was on it, mm -hmm. um, I was intrigued by some of the, the bloggers and some of the comments about retirement. Mm -hmm. yes. And mm -hmm. it made me think about uh, during the years when I was in mortgage. I was a mortgage right. um, uh, uh, professional. Mm -hmm. And uh, people would go into their retirement and take out money to buy a house. They take out money um, for college education for their children. They take out money if they got in a tight and they needed, you know, to take care of a credit card or exactly. whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I was wondering, what's happening? I mean, is that something that's advisable to do? Well, you know, a lot of people have done that simply because the interest rates on credit cards and uh, other instruments, excuse me, is pretty high. Now, I don't advocate borrowing or taking monies out of, and, and I've seen uh, a, a number of folks who have borrowed money from their employer-sponsored mm -hmm. retirement accounts. Now, let me define that. That's uh, your thrift savings plan, which if you're a federal employee. A federal employee, uh, right. 401k if you're in the private sector. Uh, there's the, uh, well, of course, the TSP, or mm -hmm. I should say the, the thrift, thrift savings, savings plan is referred to as a TSP. Mm -hmm. Uh, your 403B for your educators uh, who have that type of employer-sponsored retirement accounts. Now, the, the employer-sponsored retirement accounts have limitations. And when you go in to uh, get a distribution from your employer-sponsored retirement account, and I'll refer to it from henceforth as qualified plan, uh, there is a, a, a withholding of approximately 20%. It, now, something else, too, there's risk involved. Um, 20%, usually, 20%? If you take wow. these monies out, all righty, uh, get a distribution mm -hmm. from a employer and an employer-sponsored retirement account, there is a 20% withholding that is done. So if you took $100,000 out of there, you get 80000 That's automatically done. Now, uh, I want to share with you there are several ways in which you can get a distribution without any penalties. Uh, but there's a risk. Uh, the first is if you're a first-time ho home buyer, okay, you can take up to ten thousand dollars and get that. Uh, uh, hardship is another. Uh, uh, you can borrow. When monies. you say hardship, is, is, if are, there's are some they type defining of, hardship? Well, it will be defined by the program itself, the okay. HRA, in which uh, so it could change. Uh, yes, depending on the employer, in, what they consider to be a hardship. Exactly. So you may. Uh, and then you can, the risk is, is that, another risk, I should say, um, is that if you borrow the money, you have up to five years to pay it back. Now, suppose you're separating from service. Well, if you don't pay this money back, the money that you have borrowed already, so what happens to you? Uh, you have 30 to 90 days to pay the money back already. And uh, or, if, else. or else <laughs> that distribution uh, is subject to taxation as ordinary income. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So that's an additional yeah, so on top of on, what you've... Oh, wow. So there's a risk there. So uh, I'm not an advocate of uh, borrowing or taking money from an employer-sponsored retirement account. Uh, what I do like is the opportunity I help many a client roll over these monies a non-taxable event into an IRA, whether it's a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Now, 
Uh, something else, too, uh, I make sure, we were talking about annuities mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Um, if we roll over these monies into an IRA, uh, with, uh, that's, that is an annuity, that's an IRA, um, there's, uh, I also look into the suitability of those annuities and that rollover. Suitability meaning that w I help the clients with the budget, all right. Uh, we set up an emergency fund. We prepare for that because, like I've said in so many, uh, uh, I guess, presentations that I've given, mm -hmm. is that you don't want to use your retirement dollars for or as an ATM machine. Right. All right. Now, there are liquidity options available such that you can get monies from that IRA, and that does eliminate that 20% withholding. Now, there's a 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half, whether you get the monies from your, uh, your employer, uh, sponsored retirement account, or qualified account, uh, or if you get the monies from your IRA. So let me see if I understand. You're saying that if you're under 59 and a half mm -hmm. and you try and take money out, that there is an additional penalty Yes, if, if, if they allow you to take it out. Yeah. Uh, now, some... Uh, employers allow what we call either it, it with the federal system uh, federal government is age-based transfer that is mm -hmm. you can retain your employment you're 59 and a half and you can roll over your thrift savings plan into an IRA uh, in the private sector they call it uh, uh, eight non age based they, they I think they refer to it as uh, my memory serves me correct uh, in-service transfer Mm -hmm. so that you can roll those funds over into uh, an IRA. And it gives you more flexibility and more control as well. So okay. uh, I've, I've done uh, a great service for many a people, many a person, uh, with their handling their assets, or I should say their nest egg, keeping it safe, right. rolling it over, and also preparing uh, the nest egg, that IRA, such that it will provide an income not only for you, but for your for your for your spouse, oh, wow. your your children, and your grandchildren. Wow! Set up what we call multi. Well, I have I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. What if it, it's a, a a person that has been working, say, for 15, 20 years? Mm -hmm. They're not at that fifty nine and a half mm -hmm. threshold, but they want to take money out and roll it over into uh, a fixed annuity. Mm -hmm. Are they allowed to do that because of their age, or do they have to wait until they're 59 before they can can do that, can do a rollover? Well, let me share this with you. Uh, we have some young, you know, today there are very few pensions. Uh, as a matter of fact, in That's 1989, true. I'm sorry, 1985, about 90 percent of all the companies in the U.S. offered a defined pension program. Uh, well, by 1987, I should say, no, 2007. 2007, only 29% of the companies in America offered a pension. It's even a less, a smaller percentage now that offer pensions. Uh, in other words, the our young people, and I have adult uh, children uh, in the workforce, they're not offered that type of benefit of the defined pension program. They have really? to open up a qualified plan, a 401k. Uh, or a thrift savings plan if they're part of the government. But now, answering your question, I wanted to preface that, uh, is that there are young people that uh, more or less change jobs. You know, they have, very, they have contracts and they leave a trail of 401ks or qualified plans behind. Those monies can be rolled over because they're separate, they separated from service and they're under 59 and a half. Right. Now, uh, what is interesting too, let's suppose the young person or an individual who is a boomer under 59 and a half needs income, has a 401k in between jobs. And they say, well, I, I, I've got to have an income. Right. What, what do I do? Well, uh, there is a rule, an IRS rule called the 72T. Whereas there's, you roll over the qualified plan, the employer sponsored retirement account, into an IRA, and there is a distribution from your nest egg, mm -hmm. 
and you get re what we call reasonable interest. And uh, it is either five years, or 59 and a half, whichever comes first, you'll receive a distribution from your IRA now because you have control of it. Okay. All right. And uh, you do not, your, your nest egg is not subject to the 20% withholding. Wow. It is distributed as ordinary income. And th this is a new ruling? Well, or? it's been around for some time. Because I've never heard of it's it before. I mean, a lot of people T. have just not heard of, of these types of strategies. I tell you, well, To know that. I mean, I, I, and I don't know how you feel about mm -hmm. this. I, I have for a long time felt that the 401ks were not really designed for people to depend on them totally as they have mm -hmm. down through the years. And now it looks like maybe that was correct because folks have lost so much money. Well, they've lost a lot of money. 401ks. And, yeah, with the, the advent of the IRA back in the 70s, uh, uh, folks start saving money and their monies were placed in various uh, variable accounts. And uh, since the d defined pension programs is more or less almost eliminated, gone away, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your retirees and soon to be retirees have just been thrown out there and trying to manage their their monies uh, is a and I always ask the question is that an easy task or difficult task to try to manage your funds all by yourself it's uh, it can be a lonely journey and a very risky journey without uh, a financial professional to help you right mm -hmm. we have about uh, probably about four or five minutes to go but there's one question I wanted to touch on and um, I hope that we have enough time for you to answer. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people who are maybe within a year or two of retiring? What kind of steps okay. do they need to take? Because, I, you know, that's kind of scary, especially if you haven't really prepared yeah, that well. It, it does kind of creep up on, on you a little bit there, yeah. uh, Tia. Uh, what I tell, uh, and I have a number of clients that, uh, or potential clients, as well as regular clients who've come in, uh, had the they prepare themselves. They say, well, I'm coming out in a year. Well, the first thing we got to look at is we look at your, your nest egg mm -hmm. and we start moving it toward a more, uh, into more safe type of, safe vehicles that don't fluctuate as much. Like insurance? Well, you can okay. use insurance as part of your, your, your retirement income planning. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and uh, you, you look at safe instruments. Now, in this, low interest rate environment, um, it's kind of difficult to uh, place your monies into maybe CDs or money market accounts uh, because they're so, the interest rate is so low. But uh, again, I recommend uh, annuities, but you've got to know how to use them. So uh, number one, we establish, you establish a budget because now we've got to look at uh, your outlay. You also want to minimize debt. I want to come out and have Sorry. a tremendous amount of debt because uh, if you're lucky, I'm going to use this word lucky, to have a pension, then you know you're only receiving about 75, maybe, maybe anywhere between 60 and 75 percent of your salary if you have one. But suppose you don't have a pension. Well, you've got to depend on that nest egg. Yeah. So therefore, uh, good emergency fund, in addition to the emergency fund, it's a good idea to have anywhere between six months to a year's income. Oh. Alrighty, practice on your your uh, on how you wish to uh, spend money. Uh, you and 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 try to avoid volatility as much as possible. Right. Okay. Right. There's um, something else you you should consider too is make sure that if you have all your insurances in order. Will your company offer health insurance? when you separate. Uh, if you are in your 60s, uh, when will you be eligible for Medicare? Oh, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole nother subject. Alrighty. Will <laughs> you take, uh, you got to understand, suppose you're eligible for Social Security. Do you take it at age 62, or that's uh, when you're eligible, or do you take the Social Security benefit at age 60, 65 to 67? That's the current right that's a that that's a lot to think about 
Freeman, we're just about uh, out of time. Mm -hmm. It has been such a pleasure to have you here with as our guest today. Oh, I thank you for having me. We look forward. I mean, I have at least 15 questions here on this sheet that I didn't get to ask you. Yes. Will you come back and I visit with us again? I certainly will. Will you also tell our uh, viewers how they can get in contact with you? You can reach, uh, you can go to my website, justaskfreeman.com. I highly recommend it. All righty, <laughs> all righty. And uh, there are, I've got a safe money kit which you can download if you want info. And also, uh, you can reach us at our office at 1 471 SAFE or 1 471 7233. Freeman, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And in closing our show today, let me just encourage you to spend some time this week thinking seriously about your financial situation and asking yourself, questions such as, am I prepared for retirement? Have I prepared for my family in case I have an accident or pass into eternity? What happens to my wife, my husband, my children if I am incapacitated or should unexpectedly die? Am I putting any money aside for unforeseen situations that will occur at some point in my life? Trust me on that one. If you cannot answer these questions, these critical questions, with some degree of confidence you need to contact us at skills to rock at gmail.com. You've heard Freeman, uh, his um, uh, information to contact him. We'd love to hear you. Thank you so much for watching Skills to Pay the Bills. Bye-bye. See you soon.